So I think it's a, it's, it's a very, I think what, what uh, Jean has been saying is that maybe we should speak more about the maleness or femaleness, the masculine aspects or traits, as she puts it, and the feminine aspects. They are not opposites. They are in each one of us. And therefore, uh, in some sense, we uh, should not make that sharp distinction. Uh, what I was going to try to say is that uh, we have to act out who we are, our own orientation. Why does the lesbian feel more comfortable acting out as a male? Then a guy acting out is more feminine aspects. What's the problem here? Because it's, to me, it's the culture, it's the society that determines what is acceptable. And so you succumb to the cultural impact. Okay, any more questions from the audience? Uh, do you have any experiences of, let's say, you are in a theological seminary, right? Um, do you have to prepare liturgies for your cathedral cosmic and this sort of thing? Do you have any problems, let's say, in uh, trying out an experimental liturgies in more maybe women oriented or what? Were that, I mean, how do you? Negotiate that. Okay, I just started last month, so I haven't done that yet. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> um, I'm actually quite interested to know if anyone else has other perspectives on this topic or if you want to talk about other things. Um, I personally find, uh, I, I'm a feminist and I will admit to that, but I sometimes find you know, talking about feminine language, masculine language, and all that a bit passe. Like, can we get past that already? And look at more important issues, um, you know, I'm not saying it's unnecessary, it's a necessary step, but, it's unnecessary. yeah, you know, sometimes it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's very theoretical, you know, and, well, yeah, I think it's more important to talk about very practical steps, so, I mean, what do we really think of each other, you know, for example, yeah, so, please speak up. You know, I, I have no idea where FCC is, um, having only met you twice now, but um, in community development, it does seem to me that there are stages, and um, if I look at um, the stages that we went through as a community of faith, there, there was a stage in which uh, women needed their own space um, just to get a handle on, on how they were defining themselves. and how they were going to relate to this larger body. And having that separate space was actually safer for other women to enter into than expecting them to enter into this larger uh, community. And it could be, I mean, I don't know what the culture is here in Singapore, but it could be that, that, that that's something that FCC needs to consider along with how it languages things and how it images things on a Sunday. Um, you know, all of those things could be component pieces that would be helpful in terms of expanding your outreach and your appeal. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I totally agree with you. I think that right now, sorry, I'm probably dominating this, so I think you should say something. So you used to it. Now, I think you're not saying it because it seems to be like a one way track right now. Yeah, we're just listening. Um, I, I, I do think that, you know, at this stage in Singapore's gay and lesbian evolution, uh, I'm not too troubled by the fact that there isn't too much interaction right now. Because I think maybe we're at a stage where maybe uh, the, the, the women do need that space, you know. And, and we have this like Queen Sayoni and, 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 and I think maybe that's where we are. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. That, that's that's the, to answer, you know, Ram Ram's question. But as, to, as, as, as to answering your question, I, I totally agree with you that God is beyond gender. I totally agree with you that you know we need to move beyond just talking about gender. But but that's not where Singaporean Christianity is today. And we can you know come with, with our